Welcome to the How-To series. This how-to presents an introduction to teaching functional communication to early childhood learners. Some of the children you will see will not have a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorders. However, the examples all depict strategies and teaching practices that can benefit all students. Functional communication is a very important skill for preschool students, and it is critical that all individuals have some form of communication. Communication is a fundamental part of what makes us human. We communicate verbally, non-verbally, in written text, and in gesture. We convey subtleties and express primal needs. Language is both very complex and fundamental to our basic needs as social creatures. We use functional communication to get what we need, ask for help, advocate for ourselves, and express our feelings to one another. When we think about communication, we often think about a conversation using verbal speech. And while many individuals with autism do use verbal speech as their primary means of communication, many use other modes of communication. Remember that social communication is the defining characteristic of autism, which means that many students with autism may not learn to use verbal speech and will require another mode of communication. The Picture Exchange Communication System, or PECS, is a common research-based communication system that uses picture icons to communicate with conversation partners. Other modes include voice output devices, or VOCA, also sometimes called Augmentative and Alternative Communication, or AAC devices, which range from specific high-tech interactive devices that operate on a computer, iPad, or mobile device operating systems, to simpler devices with only one or two buttons that play a recorded word or phrase. Sign language is another mode of communication used with students with autism, most often in conjunction with other modes in a multimodal or total communication system, meaning we teach and support students using not one, but multiple ways to communicate to ensure they get their needs met. Other ways of communicating include eye gaze, gestures, body language, facial expressions, and any other behavior. We've talked about some different forms of communication, but why is something that comes so naturally to many of us so important anyway? Because communication is a foundational skill in every part of school success, both academically and otherwise, as well as having an independent life. As such, having a way to communicate with others is a basic human right, and it's absolutely imperative that all students have an effective means of communicating their wants and needs, thoughts and choices. Often, students without a means to communicate resort to problem behavior to advocate for their needs. Thus, providing all students with a communication system will reduce interfering behavior in the classroom. So, if we give a communication system or device to a student, that's enough, right? Not quite. We need to make sure we support a student's communication by selecting a system that is appropriate to the student, teaching them how to use it, and making sure that the system is available throughout the day. This means that if a student uses a device or a PEX book, that it is with them in all their classes, at lunch and recess, and during transitions. Also, teachers, assistants, and other staff should prompt students' use of the system as they would any other skill still in acquisition. Skills should be taught in natural environments and settings so that students understand the power of language to get what they need in the world around them. Students who have weak communication skills will often be reluctant to use them, so students must be extra motivating, both in selling items and activities that encourage communication and in praising the students' attempts at communication. In order to set up opportunities for young learners to communicate, a lot of planning is required to ensure that students get the repetition of practice they need. One way to do this is by sabotaging the environment. In other words, restricting access to items students need or want so that they have to use communication requests instead. It is very important when teaching communication to give many opportunities for students to practice and for those opportunities to practice to come in multiple environments with different people. This also means using communication phrases in different situations and with different items. For example, rather than only requesting goldfish from the same pair of professional each snack time, students should practice requesting all kinds of highly engaging objects and activities with as many different staff and peers as possible. Practicing in diverse situations with lots of different kinds of materials and many conversation partners will help students generalize communication skills, meaning they'll be able to use them to communicate effectively throughout their lives rather than being prompt dependent on certain adults. Let's watch our first video. In this video, you'll notice the teacher prompting the student to choose which reinforcer he will work towards in a later activity. While you watch the video, notice how the teacher provides support to the student by modeling the word and waiting for him to request the item before then praising him for his communication. 
ball or bunny? No. No. Bob balls. Kalani. Take it off. Take it off. What did you see? Notice how the teacher offered highly engaging choices using visual picture symbols. The student was first prompted to make the choice before being given a model and support to then make the communication attempt. Sometimes it is important to allow students time to make choices first before helping them to use communication. Notice that while the student uses an adapted picture symbol exchange system, the student also uses verbal approximation by saying bubble. The teacher could have further encouraged his use of verbal language by praising this request as well as his use of the picture exchange communication system. In the following video, you will notice two students taking turns painting a canvas using a paintbrush. Notice how the teacher encourages their play and then prompts the turn taking. It is. We can paint some more. Is your turn over? Is it Bradley's turn? All right, what do you need? It's Bradley. Oh, Bradley. 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 What did you notice? Did you see the communicating student's peer prompt him by offering a turn? Did you notice that the teacher stayed out of the exchange for the most part, allowing the students to communicate independently? When supporting students' communication, it can also be helpful to teach their peers models or communication partners ahead of time, making sure that both peers know what is expected in an activity and what language can be used. Using peer models, especially peers with typically developing communication skills, can be a powerful and motivating way to teach communication. Let's watch a few more videos about teaching communication. As you watch these videos, pay attention to both the modes of communication that students use, the settings that they are practicing them in, and how the teacher prompts, supports, and praises communication. Yay! Blue! I want the blue, Miss Cindy. Here you go. Blue. You're very welcome. No, no, no. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll Are you happy or sad? You touch. I'm happy today. Yay! Yay! Good job, Scott. Any backpack on? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
based on the students' strengths and taught and supported throughout their school environment by all staff. Teaching communication is not just the role of a speech pathologist or the classroom teacher. Finally, communication should be taught in meaningful situations and multiple kinds of environments and activities with different items and people. 